Hello again, my beautiful friends. Welcome back to the workbench. We have here again tonight, my Game Boy Color. If you're here with me last time, we replaced this scratched up screen cover with a nice sharp tempered glass one. Now we talked about in that video, what we should do if the case of the Game Boy is very dirty and faded in interesting ways like mine is. As you can see, there used to be stickers on it and it didn't clean up nicely. And no matter what we do, it's really not gonna clean up that great. But tonight I have for you the solution. So the answer to this particular problem is a completely new case for the Game Boy Color. We're gonna do a full case replacement tonight. We're gonna replace this purple, which I love, with transparent purple, which I love more. So this whole case replacement, which also came with replacement buttons and replacement push pads, was about $10 from AliExpress shipped. So it's really not that expensive to do, and more importantly, it's easier to do than to scrub up this old classic Game Boy Color. Now I'm all for keeping things classic and original, but in this case, this is to preserve the original case, believe it or not, because what we're also gonna do tonight is a IPS screen mod for the Game Boy Color. So it's gonna be a full case replacement and a new screen. And in order to do that, we're gonna have to cut the new case. And I didn't wanna cut my original case. I wanna keep this all together, all stuck. But the functional Game Boy is gonna be in the new case with the new screen. So let's take this all out of the packaging and see what we have to work with. So we have the case, obviously. We have here is the control board, an adapter cable. This is a small capacitive touch button for the screen. And we have the screen in here. Now the screen cost about $50 from AliExpress. So it'll hopefully be very good because putting $50 into an obsolete console isn't always the best choice. Okay, so we have a small pad that should help hold this LCD in place and we have the tape to kind of attach it to the case over here. The case itself came with a new back sticker for the Game Boy Color, which has more or less the same information as the original one. The printing's not quite the same. It has this weird check mark here and interestingly enough, it says made in China. The case is made in China, the Game Boy, the internals were made in Japan. The original says made in Japan. So that's kind of interesting. What also came with the case, we have the new buttons and the new contact pads. Dump all those out. There we go. Uh, so hopefully these are close to the original. I'm probably gonna use the original on that though. You start and select button, new power switch, new D-pad, which eh, I've felt worse. New buttons, which, so thankfully the A and B are molded into these buttons. When I replaced the case on my DS Lite a long time ago, the A and B buttons were painted on and that wore off immediately and it's looked terrible ever since. Yeah, thankfully these were molded in. I still have probably use the original buttons because I think it'll feel better. These aren't bad, but it's important to me that the buttons feel like the original. We also have screws for the outer case. There must be six, yeah. And then the three Phillips for the circuit board. And right here we have the cover for the IR blaster, which uh, doesn't really look right to me. It looks like it's made out of an opaque gray plastic instead of this shiny black that is transparent to infrared. So this might not actually be functional. So let's just real quick do a test on this to see what happens. Okay, so here's my phone and we hit the button. You can see the infrared going. So we have the plastic here from the new case. See the infrared? Let's just put it on there and cover it. You do not see the infrared. Okay, yeah, so this is an opaque plastic to infrared and this is not gonna work. So when we put this back together, I'm gonna use the original plastic, not this new piece. All right, so it looks like we have everything we need. So let's go ahead and take apart the original Game Boy and I'll be back to you in just one second. One, two, three, four, five, six. Carefully pull the back off. Remove the LCD ribbon cable. Be very careful with that. There we go. Then we have one, two, three Phillips. All right, now let's carefully pull the board out like that. And now we've got to remove the speaker. I forgot about that. This is not ideal. All right, there we go. Wasn't too hard. Just this tiny little snap with the guitar pick. Look how dirty this speaker is. A lot of crud's been building up on this over the years. Let's try to clean that off real quick. So I've got a bit of the trusty rubbing alcohol on a cotton swab. And don't use very much pressure at all because it might bend the membrane of the speaker and do more harm than good. Here, let's try to soak that slightly. Oh, that did not work out. 
I can't help but wonder if it was actually glued in there or just stuck by all this gunk. All right, I think I've got enough of it off of there. It's not perfect, but I think it'll be okay. Now, before we get too far, I actually want to test this new screen to make sure it works. So what I'm going to do is put the Game Boy back in its shell, hook up the new screen, and just test it to make sure everything turns on. The reason it needs to go back together partly is because its battery holder is built into the shell right there. All right, but first let's hook up the screen. So let's put the adapter cable in this board. Now it might seem like the connections should go down toward the circuit board, but actually the connectors are on the top. So these contacts will be up. We'll just slip it in right here. just like that and clip it down. Make sure it's tight. Now for this new circuit board, the black side does go up with the connections down. So let's slide it in there like so. There we go. Make sure it's firmly in there. It's a little hard to push in, just kind of slip it in. Next, the LCD goes in with the black side up and eventually it will be bent around sort of like this. But for now, black side up. Again, it has to slide in to the connection and then you fold down this long piece to clip it in place like that. So that should all be together. Now let's put on this little touch button to see how that works. So the connections go down on this one with the long piece of the button going to the left. There we go, slip it in. Okay, that's all we should need to test out the screen. So let's use a bit of the case here. Make sure nothing gets pinched. There we go. And switch it on. All right, there we have it. Looks like it's good to go. Now let's try touching that button if we can to change the screen brightness. Okay, that's not working. Okay, so I was having some issues with this little capacitive button here. It is in there correctly. The issue is that it only responds when you tap it very fast and it'll change the display brightness. If you hold it down, yeah, it doesn't do anything, but it is installed correctly and that's the important part. Okay, now that we know the screen's good, it's time to work on the case so that the screen will actually fit inside of it. So let's first remove the screen itself because we're gonna need that and everything else we can set to the side. The important components here is the faceplate, the screen, this piece of adhesive, this tiny rubber pad, and the screen protector lens thing I still don't know what to call. All right, so when we take the screen, we try to fit it in there. You'll see that it's too long to fit inside of the plastic here, and you have to be able to center it kind of left and right. And if you look from the front, the screen is bigger than the hole itself. So we need to make the hole bigger, and we need to remove this piece of plastic here. So the question is, how do you figure out what size the hole needs to be? So it comes with this adhesive strip here that'll hold the screen into place. So the way I see it, this adhesive strip has a space for the screen that is of the right size, and it fits in here quite perfectly. So we'll just pop this middle piece out here, trace around it, and then cut out the plastic so it lines up perfectly with that, as well as get rid of this plastic support down here. Okay, so let's just remove this center square piece here. So we just have the adhesive part that we care about. Set that aside, line this up so we know where the screen goes. Got myself a Sharpie. We'll just trace on there the exact shape that we need to shine through. Now there's a little bit of wobble room here, but that's okay because this screen cover is going to cover up all the edges that we just cut out, at least for the most part. So once we put that on, it should all line up. Okay, so now that we've traced it, we just gotta do our best to cut around on this line. Got myself a utility knife right here. And I've also got my side cutters and we might be able to chip away at the plastic. Now oh, see, once you've scored it pretty good, this sort of just breaks out on its own. So this is gonna be easier than I expected. Yeah, it just breaks right out. It's amazing. On the other hand, since the plastic's so weak, it might not hold up very well long term, but at least it's easier to pull this out. Try not to cut yourself. There we go. Real quick, let's go over it with a knife to make sure we get all the little burrs and bits of plastic smoothed out. Don't want that flying around. Okay, anyways. See how that goes. 
Uh, hopefully I didn't cut out too much. Might have gone a little bit crazy. Don't go crazy on it. <laughs> okay, now it's time to cut out this tall piece right here. Yeah, I uh, cut a little bit too much out here, so be careful with that. Back with the side cutters. I'm gonna cut each of these individual corners, and then every little bit. And we'll just try to pry it out. Oh yeah, not a problem. Not hard, way easier than I thought, honestly. I thought cutting this out would be a huge pain, and it's not a big deal. Now the screen has somewhere to go. Look at that. So I gave it enough room that we'll be able to center it, hopefully. The important side is this side. I probably cut off too much on this one. All right, there you go. Now the lines aren't straight, but that's not a big deal. Like I said, we're just gonna cover it up. We don't want all the little bits of plastic to get caught inside and stuck to the Game Boy. So you're gonna wanna keep everything as dust free as you possibly can. So in theory, the way to center this is you put on the adhesive and then you put on this little piece of rubber, kind of a spacer. So that goes on this side and the screen will press up against that. Be very careful to keep the adhesive clean, free of dust, free of grease. Should probably wipe this off and clean it real fast with a tiny bit of rubbing alcohol just to make sure it's not greasy so everything stays together because you do not want the screen to fall off and I did not give it an ideal surface to stick onto. All right, let's stick it on there. Bottom side first. Try to not get your finger on it too much. It lines up into place. Look at that. Okay, so let's put the spacer here and we'll put it on this ledge and we'll give ourselves space to remove the other piece of protecting film here and so the screen can kind of adhere underneath it. So we're gonna line that up with the top of this piece of plastic on its side, just like that. Now let's remove the upper film. This film doesn't like to come off, that's for sure. It's hard to get a grip on it. Ha, ah, got it, got a corner. There we go. And let's remove the protecting piece of the LCD so it doesn't get stuck underneath there. Hopefully we're not doing that too soon. We'll line it up with the corner and with this spacer that we just put on, try to make it square, press it down, hopefully not too hard. And hopefully that's centered. It's about as good as we're gonna get. All right, so this all kind of goes together like origami. So this bends this way like that and be very careful these bends. Circuit board bends over like that. And the whole thing bends over like that. Don't crease the wires, just gently let it fold over itself. Before we get this completely back together, don't forget all of the buttons and the switches and all that fun stuff. So the start and select switch go either direction it looks like. So we'll just slip those in there. We will get the A and B. We have a big post and a little post. Okay, the buttons go on before the pads. So I'm a really smart person with that. All right. D-pad, we'll get A and B. Everything is keyed, so it should only go in one way. There we go. Now we put the membrane on, and that makes a lot more sense. So the power button that goes on this side here, and we have the little notch that goes with this little notch, and these two posts move the actual physical button. So, I'll go in there so it can snap back and forth. The volume is just this knob built into the board, so that's good. Same with the COM port. And don't forget the little IR blaster shield piece of black plastic. So, we fold that over. This plastic over the front here. Perfect. Make sure the little touch button lines up with the edge of the case. That way you can press it. I'm surprised there's not a little sticky piece or anything for that. We'll try to figure that out in a second. I mean, the touch button is kind of wedged into place there, so it shouldn't be a big problem. But we're just gonna use a little piece of this screen square here, and we'll just kind of stick that into place. I don't think we need this. I just want something sticky, although it is pretty thick. Yeah, hopefully that does not cause problems. A little piece of scotch tape over the back would definitely be okay. Okay, at this point, let's get the speaker back into position there. All right, now that the screen's in, all we have to do is screw it back together. We have one, two, three Phillips head, six tri-wing, and then we just need to put this lens cover on, 
And we have this sticker here for the back. It helps to get everything lined up, screw it down a little bit, and then tighten it. All these extra cables kind of push the board up and out of the position you need it to be in. There you go, double check all the buttons to make sure they're good. Oh no. Be extra careful to make sure you don't get any fingerprints on this screen. Okay, make sure the switch is in. Night show. Put the back on. Make sure these things aren't bent. You know, it's a, it's a little bit squishy because there's more in there. We're kind of pinching it all together. So hopefully we're not pinching it too bad. Make sure you're not really pinching anything that tightening this down would cause a problem and break something. Again, it helps to drive all the screws in part way and then tighten them down once everything's in place. And you're sure that you haven't messed anything up. So these new screws are not very good and you can strip them out. So be careful about that. Okay, now that we got the screws in, let's put the sticker on. Try to line it up. And of course the sticker does not perfectly fit the slot. It's slightly too narrow. So now you gotta center it. You know, you don't need the sticker anyways. Okay, now it's time to put this front screen on, and interestingly enough, this is tempered glass. Now this is the one that came with the IPS screen, not with the case itself. The one that came with the case was plastic. It's important to use the one that came with the screen because this outline is bigger than what was previously on the original. Because the screen is bigger than the original. And interestingly, this new frame is actually a lot closer to the original than this IPS one we just put on. So this is a black border when the original one had gray. And the logo, the C-O-L-O-R, is way more accurate than this one here that we put on before. But before we put this on, be sure to clean off the screen. I was worried this protecting piece of plastic would get stuck on, and it probably would have, but I ended up getting some fingerprints and dust on this screen here. And it's very important to get this as clean as possible, because that dirt is never coming out once you put this faceplate on. So, fun fact, these lens wipes scratch this screen. So the front of the screen isn't glass, it's not even a good plastic. So when you're putting this together, be very, very sure not to get fingerprints on it, because you might damage the screen trying to clean off the fingerprints. But they're very small, very hard to see scratches, so it's not a big deal. Just be aware, it's a lot easier just to never have to clean that in the first place. I wish that the screen protector was in a way where we could install the screen with it on and pull it off at the very end, but I just don't think that's going to work because you would have kind of glued it on with that adhesive there. So finally, as a last step, let's put this nice cover over the screen to protect it from further damage and further fingerprints. And there's no sticky stuff on the screen this time, so this is a better put together product than the last one. All right, fits in there perfectly. Now we have to clean off the front of this but the back should be perfect. Okay, and there we have it. Nice, new, clean, shiny Game Boy Color screen in a cool, transparent purple case that's not dirty. Brand new. So let's put some batteries in and make sure everything is good to go. That cover's a little bit loose. That's a shame. Okay, got a Game Boy Color game in there. Of course, it's one with a really slow startup screen. But you can see by tapping it, we can change the screen brightness. Looks like every time you turn it on, it defaults to the brightest though. All right, looks like all the colors are working. Now let's try Pokemon. Yep, backlight's good. Yep, everything looks good. Looks like we have a successful project on our hands, ladies and gentlemen, for once. All right, thanks for watching, everybody, and I hope you have a great day. See you later.